And now we are ready to see Webb's first image of a star dying, a planetary nebula called the Southern Ring. Let's do it. Wow, wow, this, this near-infrared image is, wow, the detail. Oh. <laughs> wow, okay, well, here we are. We have a near-infrared image on our left, or on maybe your right. <laughs> and here on the right, we have a near-infread image. Um, and so... I'm here with Carl, our, our astronomer uh, specialist. Can you tell us what we're looking at in these images? So this is a planetary nebula. It's caused by a dying star that has expelled a large fraction of its mass over in successive waves. Okay, so we actually see those waves in these images. Yes. Um, wow, wow. And so there's a lot of structure. Can you tell us a little more detail about what we're looking, maybe start with this one on the left? Yeah, so in the, in the near cam image, you see this kind of bubbly, uh, you know, almost foamy appearance throughout the whole nebula with some very structured uh, shells. But the, and this foaminess is showing up in orange mainly. And this is, this is due to the molecular hydrogen that's newly formed in the expansion, uh, just lighting up the gas and dust of this nebula. And then as we move inward, you see this kind of very uh, blue haze in the inner region. And this is actually due to very hot ionized gas that emits well in the blue um, that's heated by the core, the leftover very hot core of this star. And what about these like rays that I'm seeing in this image? Right, there, so there's also rays in the outer regions that you can kind of see, and these are holes in the inner nebula that are actually allowing the, the central star's lights to come out and kind of light it up like, uh, you know, patchy clouds with the sun shining through. Wow, oh yeah, that's what it looks like. That's so cool. Um, so you're actually a mid-infrared astronomer, which is different than near-infrared. And so what can you tell us about the details in this mid-infrared image? So this is, it looks quite different in color, um, partly because we're, we're seeing different kinds of physics going on here. So we're actually seeing in the blue, you see a lot of blue. The blue is actually due to hydrocarbon grains that are emitting very strongly in the blue for MIRI. And they show the very similar structures to what we see in orange and near cam because the, the hydrocarbon, the molecular hydrocarbon actually forms on the surface of dust grains. And so again, as we move inward, we, we see that, that the inner region is again hot ionized gas, but now it glows red because that's where it emits longest for, the strongest for MIRI wavelengths. Okay. And then as we go into the center, we see kind of the surprise for us, which is we knew this was a binary star, but we, we effectively didn't really see much of, the, of the, the actual star that produced the nebula. But now in Miri, this star glows red because it has dust around it. So in Miri, we got to see both stars very clearly. Yeah, yeah, you can't see it in the first image really, but there's two stars there. So that's a fun surprise. Um, and I think that there's another little Easter egg you want to tell us about? Yeah, so this was, uh, the Easter egg is this kind of uh, narrow filament up in the up in the top that's radially aligned. You can kind of see it very clearly in the Miri image. It shows up as this blue blue structure and it points very much to the central sources. So I thought, oh, this must just be a density enhancement in the outer nebula. I thought that very, very strongly, but other people on the team were like, no, it's a background edge on galaxy. Well, I made a bet that said, no, it's part of the nebula. By the way, I lost the bet because then we looked more carefully at both the near cam and Miri images and it's very clearly an edge on galaxy with a dust lane and a bulge. So I lost the bet. Well, you lost the bet, but you got these gorgeous images. So I think it's a win for everybody. Win. Anything else you'd like to say today? I can't wait to see where we go from here. Oh, neither can I. All right, thanks so much. Back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Alex and Carl. And I have to say that image is absolutely spectacular. So as you know, people from all over the world are watching us today and joining in our, in our excitement as we release for Webb's first science images. We've been checking in with our colleagues in Europe and Canada throughout the program, but we also want to take a moment to include the people at the oh so many viewing parties scattered around the world like stars in the night sky. So let's check in with some of them now. First, we go all the way to Perth, Australia. Do we have a signal from Perth? I guess nothing from Perth right now. Uh, maybe we have some of our other feeds. We're gonna check in with them right now. Do we have Winnipeg, Canada? Oh, there it is, there's Australia, there's Perth. Hey, waving to Perth, Australia. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
And uh, next we're going to Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Canada. Hello, Winnipeg. At a planetarium, everybody's enjoying the show, I hope. Okay, Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> everybody's watching on the, uh, there we go, Dayton, Ohio. Hello, everybody, Dayton. Nice to have you here with us. There we go, yes. Hey, hey, Dayton. Hey, <laughs> they're jumping up and down. <laughs> Hi. Okay, all the way, Bangalore, India. India, Bangalore. Hello, hello, hello to Bangalore, India. Hey. <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. Hey. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the images we're releasing. Okay, of course, NASA's family extends all over the country. The team at JPL in Pasadena, California, they're on site to celebrate with us. So hello, JPL. Some of my favorite people in the world. Hey, hello. And I think the last place we're going to right now is North of Brumman, one of our major contractors. Hello, North of Brumman. Oh, hey, all right. <laughs> Yay. Nice to see you, North of Brumman. All right, now there's also a big watch party right here on the NASA Goddard campus. Many of these people have worked on the mission itself, and we also have top NASA leadership and representatives from our government. So hello. <laughs> hello, watch party at Goddard. Yay. Okay, wonderful. So, I mean, at NASA, we are so fortunate to have all of these friends and colleagues around the globe. A major partner in the Webb mission is the European Space Agency. ESA contributions have been essential to so many aspects of this project, including Webb's spectacular launch on the Ariane 5 rocket last December. I'm very pleased to turn over the show for a few minutes to Katie Haswell. She's joining me from the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt, Germany. Hello, Katie. Good afternoon. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle, and welcome to Germany. We're at the European it's Space Agency. Okay. I'm still getting all kinds of ISB from lots of center. People. It's where the teams effectively fly the satellites. They're a little bit uh, of a cross between air traffic controllers and uh, pilots. We have lots of different control rooms here. This is the main control room and as you can see today it's not in use so we've been lucky enough to uh, move in here for today. I have two very special um, experts with me, both scientists from the European Space Agency. Uh, uh, Giovanna Giardino is a uh, NISPEC scientist. Giovanna okay. is, uh, has been working on that for, for many years and lots to tell us about that and Mark McCorcoran is a special advisor for space, for science and exploration. These two guys have been working on the Webb Space Telescope for a long time. So we're very grateful to have you with us. Thanks, folks. Okay, for me. Um, we, we are excited to reveal our image with you. But before we do that, we thought we'd give you a little bit of background. Um, because we've come here today uh, because these guys were the first ones uh, to pick up the signal uh, during the uh, Webb launch, when Webb first launched. They run a system called S-Track, which is NASA's deep space uh, tracking system and they were listening out when Webb called home. And uh, the controllers here have been looking after a whole very, very impressive list of missions since uh, 1968. ESA has played a very, very important role during the Webb, uh, for the Webb Space Telescope. They provided the launch on board the awesome Ariane 5 launch vehicle from the Guiana Space Center. The atmosphere in the Mission Control Center was uh, electric, I can tell you I was there. Um, they've also provided people. We have 15 ESA scientists working at uh, Space Telescope in Baltimore, and also they have provided the um, uh, infrared uh, spectrograph, the near-infrared spectrograph, and also half of the MIRI instrument, which is the mid-infrared instrument. Let's take a look at those now. Webb's four scientific instruments include NearSpec, the near-infrared spectrograph led by ESA. NearSpec splits near-infrared light from astronomical objects into its components. Like a barcode, this will help scientists understand the physics of the objects they're observing, from their temperature to atomic makeup. NearSpec can observe parts of an object or the sky using an image slicer and an array of microscopic shutters. 
Webb's integrated science instrument module, located behind the main mirror, also contains MIRI, a mid-infrared camera and spectrograph. Seen here during testing, MIRI has been developed by a partnership between Europe and the US. MIRI detects mid-infrared light from planets, stars and galaxies. It can analyse molecules to help us deduce what astronomical objects are made of and peer into clouds of gas and dust where stars and planets are born. Together, these instruments will help Webb detect and analyse light from the very dawn of time, revealing the universe as never before. So, so let's get ready to reveal our image. And remember that one of Webb's jobs is to find out about galaxies, more about the galaxies, but also to help us to understand how they change. And this image is going to be very, very useful for that. Let's reveal it now. There it is. It's called Stefan's Quintet, and it's wondrous. Giovanna, what are we looking at? Yes, like you said, a quintet. So we are looking at five galaxies. Galaxies are uh, this giant structure that, as we've seen, we see everywhere around us in the universe. They contain from million to hundred billions of stars. And in fact, we live in one of them, the Milky Way. And here we see uh, five of them. This is a, a closer um, a galaxy uh, in the foreground. And these four are uh, at a distance of about uh, uh, 300 uh, million light years from us. And they're locked in a close interaction, a sort of cosmic dance driven by the uh, gravitational force. Um, you can see here yeah, these two uh, in a process of merging uh, within each other. This is a very important image uh, and an area to study because it really shows uh, the type of interaction that drives the evolution of galaxies. That, that, uh, that's the mechanism of galaxies growth. I love this image of the cosmic dance <laughs> moving through each other. Uh, Mark, there's a lot going on though in this image, isn't there? There is. So this is a near infrared image. Small galaxies groves. I love this image of the cosmic dance <laughs> moving through each other. Uh, Mark, there's a lot going on though in this image, isn't there? There is. So this is a near infrared image. Our galaxies groves. I love this image of the cosmic dance <laughs> moving through each other. Uh, Mark, there's a lot going on though in this image, isn't there? There is. So this is a near infrared image. With near spec, we can zoom into this area and we have this technology that allows us to take uh, uh, thousands of images at different wavelength channels uh, so see the uh, the, the, this distribution of the gas, what's going on in the gas uh, in different region uh, of the of this core area, and understand the, the composition of the gas, the velocities, um, the temperature. So that's imp very important to understand the physics. So it's, it's object. giving us so much information, and it just shows the power of this telescope. Mark, this is just the beginning, though, isn't it? I think that's a very important takeaway from today. You know, we these are like 
the picture's just taken over a period of five days, and every five days we're getting more data, which will contribute more in that, in that direction. It's a culmination of decades of work, but it's just the beginning of decades. And, you know, what we've seen today with these images is essentially that we're ready now. This telescope is working fantastically well. And, you know, to, to, to borrow a phrase from a famous rock musician, you know, we're ready to turn this telescope up to 11. It really is time. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, both of you. Back to you, Michelle. Thanks, Katie. It is so great to have you and your colleagues with us on this historic day. So before we get to the fifth and final image reveal of the day, it cannot be said enough that an achievement like the James Webb Space Telescope is something bigger than any one of us. It's bigger than any organization, any country. This truly takes a planet. Webb belongs to all of us. And starting today, the discoveries start and they're not going to stop. This is just the beginning. We've said several times throughout the broadcast that the Webb mission is about people. And during the construction of the Great Telescope, people started to see themselves in it, literally. Day after day, people visited the observation window at NASA Goddard. And looking through the glass, they snapped selfies of themselves reflected in the gigantic golden mirror. These photos are actual reflections of the enormous human investment and the emotional commitment that brought this mission to life. And now, years later, that mission is finally collecting light from the earliest days of the universe, all the way to worlds in our own solar system. It's the same mirror that reflected the many faces who see themselves as part of the journey to understand our shared origins. Let's stop for a moment and appreciate the people behind Webb. Okay, it's time now for the last image to be revealed. Here we go. Strawn is Webb's deputy project scientist. He's here with me today to share the final big reveal of the day. So, Amber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? Oh, so great. So exciting. What a, what a great day this is. Yeah, so one of the things that we're going to do is before we get to the final image, the James Webb... Amber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? Amber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? Oh, so great. So exciting. What a, what a great day this is. Yeah, so one of the things that we're going to do is before we get to the final image, the James Webb... Amber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? Oh, so great. So exciting. What a, what a great day this is. Yeah, so one of the things that we're going to do is before we get to the final image, the James Webb... Amber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? Oh, so great. So exciting. What a, what a great day this is. Yeah, so one of the things that we're going to do is before we get to the final image, the James Webb...
Kimber, it is so good to see you. How are you feeling? Oh, so great, so exciting. What a, what a great day this is. Yeah, so one of the things that we're going to do is before we get to the final image, the James Webb... Please tell everybody I'm paid to worry, uh, frankly, uh, and, and, and that's good. Uh, what we want to do, though, is, you know, just really thank the team again. You know, of course, we heard uh, Bill and Scott and uh, Greg talking about the team that is there. I think what's also important is to recognize that Bernie is sitting there. It was the first uh, manager. I was sitting there. Could you stand up? And... Uh, and I want to mention that Phil Sablehouse, who is a manager uh, also during a time, is no longer with us, but uh, his heart is with us today. Yeah. I have to tell you, I have to tell you, John, uh, after each one of these milestones, I called a lot of people. I called Bernie, for example, and I called uh, people who had my job and people who are administrators because there's many of them. And I just wonder how you feel about the team. Just uh, give you the word here. I am just so thrilled that we had a privilege to assemble such a brilliant team. We drew from the best of the best, and here we are. So my extreme deep thanks go to all the people who built that team not only to Bernie, who started us and helped us build up all the technology, to Phil, who made sure we would have a plan, and then when we didn't have quite enough money, to Bill, who pulled it all together and made it get all the way to the end. I am so thrilled that we had so much talent to draw on, and here we are, we have the support of the country and the world to take on this immense challenge. You know what I'm most excited about? There's tens of thousands of scientists, and frankly, some of them just got born, or not even born, yeah. uh, who, who are benefiting from this amazing telescope because it will be with us for decades. It Can will be. That? We have, it took us about 25 years to get here since 1995, and we have at least 25 to go, I hope. So look, uh, we are in a sense of awe of these images, the art that is out there in the sky revealed for the first time. We're thinking of the team and we're thanking them. John, thanks to you, thanks to all of you, and back to Michelle. Thank you so much, Thomas. And this entire collection continues to just absolutely astound me. Okay, Amber, so here it is. Can you walk us through the final image reveal? <laughs> absolutely. Here we go. The last image is, wow, look at that. So, Amber, can you, can you tell us a bit about what we're seeing here? Of course. This stunning vista of the cosmic cliffs of the Carina Nebula reveals new details about this vast stellar nursery. Today, for the first time, we're seeing brand new stars that were previously completely hidden from our view. Is there something you want to point out here? Absolutely. So, honestly, it took me a while to even figure out what to call out in this image. There's just so much going on here. It's so beautiful. One thing that really, really stands out to me is you sort of get this sense of depth and texture from this new data. Um, there's just, there's a lot going on. To call out a few specifics, first of all, in general, the Carina Nebula is a nearby star forming region within our own Milky Way galaxy, about 7,600 light years away. Um, and in this view, we see some great examples, first of all, of hundreds of new stars that we've never seen before. We see examples of bubbles and cavities and jets that are being blown out by these newborn stars. We even see some galaxies sort of lurking in the background up here. We see examples of structures that, honestly, we don't even know what they are. Like, what's going on here? There's just, there's, the data is just so rich. And there's something really special about the infrared. Infrared can actually see deeper into these star forming regions. Absolutely. That's one of the great things about infrared is it really does reveal uh, what's going on here in, in a really cosmic sense. And in general, what's happening in sort of this overall landscape is we have these gigantic, hot, young stars up here to the top of this rim. And the radiation and stellar winds from those stars is sort of pushing down and running into all of this. This is gas and dust. And of course, we know that gas and dust is great raw material for newborn stars and baby planets. But there's a flip side to this story and also a little bit of a mystery because these same processes can serve to sort of erode away this material and stop star formation. So we have this sort of delicate balance going on of new stars being formed, but at the same time, the star formation is being halted. And for me, when I see an image like this, I can't help but think about scale. 
You know, every dot of light we see here is an individual star, not unlike our sun, and many of these likely also have planets. And it just reminds me that, you know, our sun and our planets and ultimately us were formed out of the same kind of stuff that we see here. We humans really are connected to the universe. We're made of the same stuff in this beautiful landscape. And actually, the Carina Nebula was one of my favorite images from Hubble. So Hubble looked at this as well, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The Hubble image of this is also spectacular. We saw it in a, a different kind of light when, when Hubble uh, took an image of this, of this uh, particular nebula. And then you can see amazing things with Hubble, but when we zoom in to this new image, we're able to see so much more detail. And of course, all of us, you know, I grew up <laughs> on Hubble, and all of us uh, love Hubble. And I'm just, I'm so excited to see what these two amazing observatories are able to do really in tandem with each other. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations. It's been a pleasure to be working on this with you. I, I'm just amazed by what's been going on. I am too. Thank you. <laughs> So as we're wrapping up, one of the things that I really have to say is the, 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 the journey that we've been going on is so very dramatic for me. So we've gone all the way from the birth of stars, and we have all the way from the distant galaxies to the birth of stars. This is where we all began. This was the whole point of the James Webb Space Telescope, to figure out our origins from the very, very early days of the universe to star and planet formation very nearby. So right now, I'm very honored to have our last special guest. Uh, this is the administrator of NASA, Bill Nelson. An honor to be with you, sir. Hey, what a pleasure. What a, what a banner day. Uh, it's clear that Webb represents the best of NASA. It maintains our ability to propel us forward for science, for risk-taking, for inspiration. And we don't want to ever stop exploring the heavens, nor stop daring to take another step forward for humanity. In the words of the famous Carl Sagan, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. I think those words are becoming reality. Absolutely. Thanks, Michelle. An honor to have you here. Thank you very much. Wow. So this is a celebration for all humanity. If you've ever looked up at the night sky and wonder, whoever you are, wherever you are, this is your telescope. And we also salute the thousands of people who have dedicated part of their lives to making Webb a reality. I also want to give a big shout out for the superb media team who's helped bring Webb's story to the world. This broadcast is a joint effort of the superstar producers, animators, and social media specialists at the Canadian Space Agency, ESA, NASA, and especially the Goddard Space Flight Center. Webb captures light in distant colors that the eye can't see, and you've actually made this visible to the world. So finally, if you go to nasa.gov slash webfirstimages, you can download all of the images and data we've just shown in full resolution, and check back often. From now on, we share new discoveries for exciting new destinations around the universe. July 12th, 2022, marks a huge day for science. And it's only just the beginning. For everyone at CSA, ESA, and NASA, I'm so very pleased you could join us. I'm Michelle Fowler. Go Web. <laughs>